In this video, I will show you the power of Log4j in Talent. First of all, what is Log4j? Log4j is a logging framework widely used in the Java world and Talent produces Java code. So it's also possible to easily use Log4j in Talent. And what can you do with it? You can do something like you see here on the picture. You can get extensive information on your console about the execution of your job without changing your code. On the other hand, you can also use uh, this component TWARN or TDI on your data flows to produce some kind of conditional output to the console, depending on this log4j level. But let's now look at this in detail, heading over to talent. Here I've got a simple job where I want to demonstrate this to you in the first place, how we can get more information on the console. Okay, let me just deactivate again what I have here. So if I now run my job, I might get an output like this if everything runs fine. But as soon as I have some not really nice values here, I can show you what data I am generating. I have an ID, name and a country. And now let's suppose that the values for my country can also be null. So I put one additional value here like this, and it would pick one of those from the list for each row. I would probably get some behavior like this and not see anything at all at the console here, but just a tmap and null, which is not a really helpful information in case you ever had a null point exception in a talent or in some other Java application, you might know what I mean. What can I do now with a log4j? Uh, well, first of all, I have to activate it like I wrote here. I have to go to file, edit project properties and hit log4j and activate it. So let's do this here, file, edit project properties, and you get to check this box. Obviously you could change this configuration. There is a lot of documentation out there on the log4j page itself and on other resources on how to do that. But let's now stick with it and just click apply and close. Now, if I re-execute my job, I'm still having the same information because I also have to use it on my run tab. This is what I wrote here, how to use it. You go to run advanced settings and select your log4j level. You go check that box and the highest level with the most information you can get is the trace level and the lowest level with basically no information is completely switching it off. Okay, if you want more information on the log4j levels, please see this URL on Wikipedia as a reference. But now let's stick with the job. If I run this job here, you can see I get uh, still the same null pointer exception. And I can see some data here on the console, but I've now run my job in debug mode and I do not yet see the actual row that is causing the problem. So if you want to see the deepest level of information, you switch to trace and we run this and process again. And now if you scroll up, I got more information here, which is actually printing out in this row as it came in here from a row run uh, to tmap exception when the null point exception occurred. Here, it might not seem much, but it can be really helpful. If you imagine you have a large mapping with a lot of inputs, outputs, transformations, and so on uh, going on in your job, or even uh, this job where you try to eliminate the null point exception encapsulated in a job hierarchy. This is where this may come in really useful. Obviously, then also in a TWARN and TDI components, you can use in this level here to only output either TDIs or TWARNs in specific levels. So first of all, they would have to be triggered with this respective trigger here. So on some job error, but then also this level would have to be activated in a log4j. So you can also kind of make them conditional. With this conditional kind of a logging, I can show you here in my second example a lot better. We've got a similar subjob like the first one. We are basically producing the same data here. We're just outputting it to a buffer, okay? But in between, I want to have kind of a conditional logging. Okay, here, for example, I can refer to any uh, input uh, column value for any row by writing this piece of code, just the input name, not the column name, and then relating this to a specific level. Let's say I only want to see this information on trace level. So I execute my job. 
And here I would be able to see all my values now, all my roles on the console. Here we can see this is trace, this is the T warn, and what value has been passed in for my country, right? Because the others are the ones that are, that are there anyway. Okay, but specifically in logging out and those things, it can make sense then capture this with a log catcher to a target of your choice. But you would now see if I'm not at this trace level anymore, for example, if I switch to warn level, I don't get this information anymore. Also, if I now switch to info level, I would still see more information um, because I have log4j activated, but I don't see the country information uh, on my console. That's pretty much it on the power of Log4J and Talent. So to sum it up, you go to File, Edit Project Properties and activate Log4J there. And then you go to your Run tab to Advanced Settings and select your Log4J level uh, to get the respective level of output. And the good thing is you can also deploy it uh, with Talent when you deploy your Talent job. So you don't have to uh, switch it off or leave it out in this uh, stage. I hope this video has been helpful. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you want to learn more, go to my course, which you can find here, bit.ly slash talent dash data dash en. Uh, you can see it's got uh, good reviews and almost 3000 students trusted it already. That's it for today. See you in the next video.